When times are hard, it can be difficult to appreciate the journey in who you are with. From wanting to lash out, to questioning God on why things are happening in your life the way that they are, to feeling like your significant other is the one at fault. If you are having a hard time appreciating the journey, I'm Angie Roll. Stick around with me and let's talk love. So you guys, if you guys don't know me, you know I've had my fair share of ups and downs and so I am fully 100% recording this podcast from my chest. Y'all know I have been through it from not having support from family members getting married at 18 to not going to college right after high school and struggling to feeling like a failure, sleeping in motels, destitution to failures, setbacks, failures, and more setbacks. It's really, really been a journey. And I don't know if I can call myself like the chief of adversity because as we all know, there's always somebody out there in a worse condition than us, whether we want to hear it or not. It's true that there is always people out there doing worse than us. And that's partly why I always tell people to not idolize other people's relationships because first of all, there are good relationships out there, yes, but there are some that you may be idolizing that you don't know what they have done to get that relationship or what they're doing to keep that relationship. And so it's really important that's why I always talk about just creating a relationship that you admire, creating a relationship that you love, whether it's taking a little bit from their parents, taking a little bit from your parents, and just making it y'alls. That's the, the best way to go. But like I said, there's always somebody in a worse state than you are. And I have felt every possible adversity one can feel from like hopelessness to defeat sadness depression and it happened all while trying to be married to somebody who was fighting his own insecurities his own thoughts and his own failures and the worst of it not just happened when he was fighting his demons and I was fighting my demons we were trying to navigate young adulthood we were trying to navigate young marriage and falling into maturity it kind of puts a damper because your mind is not fully developed it really puts a damper on how you appreciate the journey and I'm certain that you may have felt this way and experienced the things that I'm talking about at this time and you're trying to navigate you know a part of your life right now and I think it's safe to say that we all have felt some type of despair in our life or some type of failure or setback in our life we have experienced every single thing that I'm referring to and we know that it's hard, it's really, really hard to be thankful in those times, to be joyful in those times, to be just conscious of living in that moment. It could be so, so difficult. And oftentimes in those difficulties, we take our frustrations out on our partner and the person close to us. And I I really had to sit down for a while and think about why do we take our frustrations out on the person that's closest to us? Like, what about this person? You would think that we would just lash out and be angry towards a stranger, but we do it with the person that's closest to us. And first, I think it boils down to the fact that we feel safe with this person. So it's kind of like a psychological trick or, or, or just flip of... I, I'm lashing out at this person. I'm not really lashing out at this person, but I feel safe with this person to stress my concerns, to stress my feelings, even if I'm stressing it in the wrong manner. I just feel like this person can nurture and do something about what it is that I'm feeling. Because like I said earlier, if you think about it, you don't just walk up to a stranger and start lashing out and venting to them and telling them how you're just stressed and this, that, and the third. You do it with the person that's closest to you. And I'm not saying that this is a pass for you to just go do it because you, you you have good intentions behind it. No, not at all. And please don't don't think that I'm saying that, <laughs> not condoning that. I think there's a healthy way to deal with this. And that's what we're going to be talking about today and, and just dealing with adversity in general. But I also think that it boils down to a lack of relational skills and emotional intelligence as well. The reason why I say relational skills is because some of us have no idea on how 
to interact with other people. We see this day in and day out of just people just being straight buttholes because they can or because they just really don't. There's We call them socially awkward people, right? So it could be because of your childhood trauma, the environment you grew up in, you know, just things of that sort that causes you to be the person that you are. But when you don't know how to identify a problem and rectify it with solutions, this is what happens. You tend to lash out at people. Sometimes you can have really good relational skills, right? And every now and then that still, that anger still comes out in a way that is um, frustrating or could come off to your partner like you're attacking them. Now it happens, but again, like I said earlier, it shouldn't be a way of communicating with your significant other. I think we all need to have a little bit of mercy when it comes to people just having moments of intense fellowship with you, you know? <laughs> and relational skills to me really ties in with emotional intelligence, right? Because if you don't understand your own emotions and your own triggers, a lash out is what tends to happen. And emotional intelligence is key for conflict management skills just resolving conflict in general and when you don't have a grasp on how to deal with your own emotions you're not going to have a grasp on how to deal with your significant other's emotions therefore your communication is going to suffer a little bit right how you interact with them is going to suffer a little bit so the root of all these things really is the core of helping your helping yourself understand your own emotions so you can better understand whoever you get in a relationship with i'm at a point in my uh, book right now i'm writing a book i'm not even going to discuss when it's coming out because i always say it's coming let me just say it's coming soon guys <laughs> and it's about trust and forgiveness and i talk about in this book how it's proven that emotions turn into thoughts and that turn in, in those thoughts turn into behaviors and the only way to stop it is to challenge those thoughts that are going on in our head like really conditioning our mind to not be that thought because we don't have to be if i if i feel angry that doesn't mean I am angry. I just feel that emotion and that feeling is fleeting. It's going to go away. Something's going to come up to not make me angry anymore. My husband may fix a problem that I'm complaining about or whatever the case may be, but it's going to go away. I'm not that feeling. Therefore, I don't have to give attention to that thought. I don't have to make that thought my reality. And because we need to understand as people just conditioning our mind and understanding that we don't have to be that. We don't have to be that emotion. And just because we think it does not mean we have to give it life. I, again, I may want to punch my husband in the face sometimes, but I'm not going to do it. It's a thought that passes over time. I think that this tends to boil and like how this all comes about is just nurturing kids in the space that they're in right then and there and just allowing them to express themselves to an extent you know respectfully i was raised in a household where my people were very much say how you feel but just say it in a respectful way and i think that's nurturing the different emotions of child of children i had came across a clip from candace owens the other day and she was bless her heart. It, it appeared as though she was saying that men should not have feelings. Men should not have emotions. Men should, she was like belittling men for having emotions. And I'm like, this is the exact reason is women like that. The exact reason why, not the exact reason, but a part of the reason why men lie, men cheat, and they do all these things that aren't conducive to a productive relationship because they don't have a safe space to express without judgment. They don't have a safe space. It doesn't make a man saucy if he's expressing his feelings. Like, they're allowed to have vulnerabilities too. And this is why men go out and cheat and do these things because they're trying to fill that void with something else. It's not really the action. They don't really truly, of course you have the dirt bags that really don't care, but some of them really truly don't want to break up their, their family. They just don't feel safe in that space. Now, again, there are douchebags out there that don't care about none of this, but there are other people that are just doing it because of an outlet. They're just trying to fill that void. And it's our responsibility as women and as wives more particularly 
because if you're just dating somebody, this is really not your uh, responsibility to an extent to provide a safe haven for your significant other. I think there's levels to things and certain things that should be given to men as women in different stages. Like, I'm not doing certain things for you I'm doing in marriage when we're dating. Like, it's just not happening. And I feel like everybody should conduct themselves that way because, like the old saying goes, if, if you're giving the milk for free, what, what the heck? Is that how it goes? I don't I forget. I don't know. But you guys get what I'm saying. Don't just give your stuff away for free. And I wanted to share my thoughts again. Like I said, this podcast is just sharing my thoughts on being thankful in times of adversity and my own personal tips on how I've been able to overcome the adversity and even adversity that my husband and I still face today, how I overcome that without lashing out on him. We just had like a super, super, every now and then me and Nate will have super duper deep conversations and it's just so enlightening of just understanding each other's vulnerabilities and where we're at in this particular moment. And I encourage these conversations. But you have to be self-aware and you have to be honest in order to, to get vulnerable. And I always have to remind myself of don't be judgmental. Let him communicate how he needs to communicate to get what he needs to get out. And we just had this dope conversation and, it, and it, you would think, 16 years of marriage, 20 years of being together, 35 years of knowing each other that we would just have each other figured out. Yes, to a certain extent, but there's always something that we are learning from each other and, and, and just things that I'm picking up on each day just to help me love him better. And so we had this deep conversation. And like I said, it was so enlightening and just so powerful. And when we both left the conversation, we both felt so good so good of just oh my goodness like I really truly am understanding this person on a level that nobody else can understand him and nobody else can understand me and so it's important to have these conversations and just check in with one another and see regardless of how perfect you think your relationship is going adversity might not be present as as in you guys are going through financial struggles and tribulations and all that stuff or or anything like that but you can be going through personal adversity that needs to be discussed between you and your partner and so there are ooh, several mistakes that we make when we're dealing with adversity in relationships and i'm referring to adversity in general and so communication kids jobs just life in general of the mistakes that we make and i want to share those mistakes to make sure that i'm helping everybody out and getting you guys in a direction that is going to help you understand your adversity a little bit better and the first thing is to understand that happiness and i saw this is so random that i'm filming this podcast i at a time where i saw something about happiness is success and I want to inform people that we should not be measuring life's success off of our level of happiness. Because like I said earlier, those feelings are fleeting. Happiness comes and goes. We need to define what true success feels like to us. And it shouldn't be attached to an emotion because we know that these things are fleeting. Like I could be sad one day and I or sad one moment and literally in five seconds I can get some news that changes the whole trajectory of my life you know so if you're unhappy that day screw it like be unhappy okay it is what it is now you don't have to entertain your unhappiness there are certain things that you can do and I'm going to share some things that I personally do to get myself kind of back on track and understanding that girl you are not unhappy it's just a moment of weakness right now. This is not your life. And so we need to stop letting emotions dictate who we are. They're just how we feel in that particular moment. Number two, I think thinking that our partner is supposed to fix every problem is super detrimental to the success of our relationship. Because if you think that way, you're always going to be thinking of them as the problem and not the actual problem as the problem. They can't fix everything. It's not their responsibility to fix everything. And I talked about this before where if you feel like or if you're trying to make your partner everything that you want them to be, you're on a slippery slope. 
They're never going to be everything you need or want them to be. It's not their responsibility to be like that. And for, you know, my Christians out there, you guys know I'm Christian. I'm a preacher's wife. I talk to the Lord all the time and you'll learn that later on. But it's just a matter of saying this person is not my God. I love my husband to death. Anybody that knows, knows I'm riding till the wheels fall off. But he's not my God. He's not my everything. He cannot give me everything. And it, once you get that in your head and stop looking for your partner to meet your every need, you are going to have success in your relationship. Hell, you're not even everything you need. So why do you expect somebody else to be that? So let's not think of our partner or expect our partner to fix every single problem. Sometimes you're expecting them to fix a problem and it's meant for you guys to fix together. But people don't, we're not ready for that conversation yet. <laughs> the third thing that I want to talk about is just piggybacking off that as well is your partner is not responsible for your insecurities. Now, again, I feel like your partner should enhance your insecurities. They should tell you you're beautiful. Babe, you look good in that outfit. Honey, you look good in that suit, et cetera, et cetera. You should definitely be enhancing. But you should not let that be your just... Oh, my husband said it. So you should feel that on the inside. And the reason why it's so bad for you to just hang on to what your partner feels about you all the time is because what happens if they leave? Voluntary or involuntary? And you just, this is just whatever they say. Like, you can't do that. You can't be that person that just relies on everything your partner says and act and want them to boost your confidence. That's not real confidence. That's false confidence if you only have it because somebody is boosting it. They should just enhance it. I know I look good in this, but babe, thank you so much for complimenting me on that. That's where you should be at. Um, don't put all your hope, and this is something that we do. We put a lot of people put their their hope from in in this one person, and in in just trying to impress this one person. Impress first of all, don't impress yourself first. Try to impress God. I mean, not like that. We can't impress Him. We're sinners. We're screwed up. But <laughs> focus on making sure that God is pleased with you, and then yourself. And then your significant other. Because I guarantee once you start focusing on yourself and being confident within, it's going to spill over into the relationship. I promise you, once your confidence boosts, I promise you guys, your marriage, your relationship, whatever you're going through is naturally going to increase. And it's going to have more life in it. Trust me. The fourth thing that I want to share is, and I've had this argument with so many people for years and years, it's been 10 years I've been arguing this, is understanding that adversity is a must in your relationship. I'm one of those people where I'm like, when we're dating, let's argue. Not, not starting a fight, but just more so, show me, show me what you're about. Show me how you argue. Do you hit below the belt? Like, I want to see all, I want to see the, that nasty side of you. Because we all have one, even in marriage, you still have a nasty side to you, a side that is not so pleasant. And when we're dating, a lot of people shy away, oh, I don't argue, I don't do this and that. No, we finna argue. And we're going to embrace the argument. We're not going to just create one. And I'm not saying that, guys. Please don't take it that way. I'm not saying create an argument. But I'm saying if it happens, embrace it and learn from it and grow from it. But adversity is a must. If you don't have it, you will never know if your relationship will stand the test of time. If you've never been through anything. For all those couples out there that's like, oh, I've never been through nothing. Oh, I don't argue. Well, how do you know your, what, what, how do you know your relationship can stand through troubles? Because guess what? Trouble may not have came, but it's coming. It's coming for everybody if you haven't had it yet. So please, please understand that adversity is what strengthens you. Adversity is what helps those setbacks become wins those failures become wins adversity is what helps you grow through the changes that are happening within your relationship so embrace it it's a character builder it's necessary for your relationship those ups and downs more so the downs so we're getting to the good part now i wanted to share my tips on my personal tips and things that i do to help me handle 
adversity better without lashing out at my husband so much. Now, again, guys, I'm not perfect. Every now and then it pops off. And you guys know, if, if you haven't uh, heard before, that I have uh, found out that I had like period depression or whatever the case may be and it's not something that's talked about often and maybe I'll do an episode on how to deal well I'm kind of doing that now about how to deal with it but just dealing with adversity in general and that's part of my adversity is just channeling those emotions to something bigger and just making sure that my husband knows that okay it's not him it's just those hormones like us women we go through a lot um, so the first thing that I do to help with adversity is I started a gratitude journal. It's a guided gratitude journal and I recently started it a few months ago and let me tell you it's been amazing. It's been amazing. It's solely to focus on the positive in the gratitude of the day and not necessarily just positivity because I think there's kind of like a, a difference between being positive and, and and having gratitude because sometimes people can be so positive that it's like bro you got to be kidding me but gratitude is something different gratitude is something that I feel like God gives you that gratitude to just appreciate and be content in all things in that moment like literally counting everything all joy gratitude is different and so I got this journal in the morning I completed it and it's like what are you thankful for what are three things that you're looking for to today good to happen today and write a positive affirmation and when I tell you guys this has been so so beneficial for me and just focusing on everything that I already have and not things that I don't have Things that I don't want. Now, granted, in the day, I'm not positive, but it's just reminding me of all the things that I do have. I still feel the emotions. I still get angry sometimes. I still feel a little bit sad sometimes. But in the end, gratitude trumps all that. I'm still feeling those emotions. I'm still dealing with those emotions. Or sometimes I'm not giving any of those emotions any any thought and any life in it because it's not necessary it's just my mind repeating things and cycles and conversations that I wish I had or didn't have or whatever the case may be I'm just repeating it over and over in my head so those type of things I'm not giving life to but sadness may come upon me I may lose um not have a returning client you know just anything that happen that can make you sad that you just have to manage and you just have to find those those triggers just managing those triggers guys and so the the gratitude journal has really helped me focus in on and then also I completed it at night too it says well what good happened today what did you learn today just straight up understanding to count everything all joy life is so short it's so fragile and we should hold on to it and we should understand that it's a gift some people don't make it to 20 some people don't make it to 80 years old. So what you're doing in this moment, be appreciative of where you're at. And with the gratitude journal, something that I started doing is I've always uh, read my Bible or scripture or something or a plan, but I, I recently started getting into devotionals. And so for two years, I was reading New Morning Mercies and I have a new one. I think it's about like letting your light shine, devotional type of stuff. And so that's been very, very helpful, too, of just getting into devotionals and kind of guiding you on, okay, what you can focus on. So if the last two days have just been, like, not complaining. So the last two days, I've, my prayer has been, Lord, please don't let me complain about stuff. Please don't let me be a complainer. Your word tells us not to be complainers. I don't want to be that. So please help me not be that. The second thing that I do is journaling. So... A lot of people don't like to journal, but it's been one of the best things ever. And I noticed that after I have gave my trouble, gave, and I'm air quoting that, gave my troubles to God, like, I'm not giving it attention anymore. So in my journal, I'm literally talking to God. Like, I, I start off saying, Lord, comma. <laughs> and I'm just casting all my cares, all my burdens on him. And it has really brought me peace of just, it's kind of like a release. It's kind of like a, a a let go of just the burden is lifted lifted off of me of what I'm what I'm feeling and what I'm going through. 
And even though I don't need to write it down for him to know what I'm going through, it still helps me internally. So you have to understand how to help yourself. I know God knows what I'm going through. I don't need to write it down. But how I, mean, I need to help myself. And it's been very therapeutic. So that's something, a suggestion that you can get into as well. Another thing that I've done to help myself be more present in the moment and not looking at adversity is happening to me before me is just when I feel defeated when I feel discouraged in the moment is I stop whatever it is I'm doing and I'll open up a scripture and I've always gone to Romans 8 like sometimes I've read the whole chapter one day one month I was just going through it guys I was really really going through it and I just opened up Romans 8 I read it every single day until I felt better until I felt better And it's just a breather to gather yourself. There's so many things accessible. You know, you're in your phone all the time anyway. Might as well download the YouTube Bible app and just, or not the YouTube Bible app, but the Bible app and just use it to your advantage. We have these tools. We can help ourselves cope. We just have to find what works for us. And I found what has worked for me and it's really been helpful in just not being so confrontational with things, just letting things go and be what they are. And it's been very, very peaceful over here with those three things. So I wanted to share that with you to help you get through your adversity and not lash out on your partner. We gotta stop that, we really do. Once in a blue, eh, okay. But if you're doing it all the time, you clearly have some internal things that you can be doing to project that anger elsewhere so appreciation and just being grateful in general plays a major role in your relationship guys if you are always glum and complaining and your relationship is going to exemplify that it's not going to be vibrant so just truly truly monitor that if you want your relationship to resemble success joy contentment you have to be all those things so I'm Angie Rowe, the team wife that turned my struggles into strengths, marital woes into wins, and made the mistakes so you don't have to. I'll see you all next week as we talk about unconditional love.